Hello, Melson. Welcome to Feedback Friday. It is February 15, 2019. How's everybody in the chat doing this morning? Uh, or this afternoon, wherever you have to be watching from. We got Brian, Daniel, Ben, P. Raz, Luisa, Michelle, Destin, Steve. Hello. Well, hi, everybody. Today, Feedback Friday, we're going to do a little bit more of an in depth preview of the upcoming Marketplace update. I uh, kind of spoke about it here and there on previous Feedback Fridays, but I uh, grabbed a few screenshots here. I think I have one, two, three, four, five screenshots that we'll, uh, we'll go through, give a little bit more of a preview of what the Marketplace update is or what you can expect when that comes. Uh, and then uh, it's, it's good because we're wrapping up our testing. We'll be able to do some last-minute tweaks here and there next week as we firm everything up and get it ready to release. Uh, which is planned for, what is the date? Tuesday, February 26th is when we're planning to launch the Marketplace update. So we still have a little bit of time to do some tweaks based on player feedback. Some more people join us in the chat. Lady Nutsy, good morning. Good morning to you as well. Debbie, Grant, Ben, Cecilia. Brian says, hello. Salim. Uh, Dave is also a screenshot, says Daniel. I don't think so. I think I'm moving down here in the video. Paul's going according to plan. Uh, so like I said, our, our testing of the new marketplace is nearly complete, and we'd like to give a preview of what's to come. Uh, just keep in mind as we go through this that some of the screenshots, or all the screenshots really, were taken from a test environment. So some prices might look a little bit odd, some other supply data, uh, some of the graphs might look not the most interesting just because it's in a test environment where there isn't a whole lot of marketplace data. We simulated some data, uh, but there's not a whole lot there. So the biggest change in the Marketplace update coming is partial orders, and really that's kind of what makes this Marketplace 2.0, or maybe it's 3.0 at this point, I forget how many versions of the Marketplace we've had, uh, but the new version of the Marketplace is much different due to partial orders. So the, the, the biggest thing is if you're looking to sell, let's say, thousands of something, you no longer need to post l lots of small, little, tiny sell offers or lots of small buy offers. You can just create one huge one and it can be fulfilled by multiple people. So you almost get this, you know, or you get this progress bar filling up as people show up in the marketplace and they start buying what you're selling, or they start selling to you uh, what you're buying, either way. So a quick example of that, let's say something like simple orbs. Let's say you have a thousand simple orbs, you wanna sell them for 3,500 gold each. Uh, it's a good item to use as an example because typically people don't wanna buy a thousand orbs all in one shot. Maybe they want 10, 20, 30, they probably want a smaller amount of them. So right now it'd be a little bit tedious. You'd have to keep making little tiny posts to sell 10 for 3,500, uh, 3, 10 for 3,500 gold. Uh, now when you make your post, you can just go, I want to sell 1,000 for 3,500 uh, 3, gold each. And actually here, let me pull up a different screenshot here. Uh, I think I have Super Bree in there, but uh, you can make one offer to sell all 1,000 and you could sell one orb to 1,000 different people or you could sell all 1,000 to one person or any combination in between. Uh, so if you could only sell, let's say 500 of them at your price of 3,500, then your order would remain at 50% complete and you can claim the gold that you've already earned there and then it'll just sit there at 50% while you wait for more buyers to show up and more gold will kind of show up in the marketplace to claim as it fills. Uh, ben asks, will this let me buy thousands of witch brew skins all at once? Yes, it would. Finally, you can, you can uh, suck the marketplace uh, completely out of its supply of witch brew skins, which there are quite a few floating around. Ask Larry to put his 11k temple turbine on sale. I think he has the actual traps, not the crafting items, so he can't trade them. Uh, Brian says, making many tiny offers would result in more earned under the marketplace, it's impossible. Yes, that's correct. But making those lots of small offers, basically you you would potentially earn a little bit more gold or get a better price because you're doing some legwork. And I think that's probably the best way to explain is you're getting paid for the tedious time that you're putting in to create lots of small ones. Uh, so definitely that's something that's going to be lost in that there isn't an ability if, say, if you wanted to buy someone's thousand orbs and then sit there and just keep making tiny little posts over time to sell them in batches of 10 and you'd earn a little bit of a, you can almost think of like a commission for taking the, the big bulk order and, and packaging it into nicer size chunks to sell retail. Uh, that'll be gone, but uh, it opened a feedback, but I don't think that's too, too critical of a feature and just the increased liquidity of the market and the ease of use, I think is much more valuable to have. 
Uh, will there be any tutorial teaching players how to use the new marketplace? Uh, none planned. We always aim for making things feel as natural, hopefully, as possible, uh, and then kind of tool tips to help you along. Definitely something we've seen, and I don't think this is unique to Mouse Hunt, is if you put a sort of introductory text or some dialogue that you need to work through to teach you how to use something, it gets skipped very quickly. And uh, we definitely, through our fair share of little user test videos, anytime a character pops up and says, this is this, this is this, uh, people hammer through it as quickly as possible, and then they're confused at the end because they didn't read anything. And so, especially for games, I think it's important that things just feel intuitive and when you do something wrong you get feedback to show what you did wrong so you, so you kind of get steered in the right direction and you learn as you go. Um, and like I said, especially for games, you're there to be entertained, not read a manual of like, okay, this is how you program your VCR. Uh, Steve asks, will this connect mobile apps? Yes, actually, that, that's, uh, that was my next point here. If you have the mouse on app for iOS or Android and you've used the exchange, the marketplace works identically. And once this marketplace update is live, uh, the Hunters playing via the app will be able to buy and sell items with Hunters playing via browser and vice versa. So there won't be that weirdness where due to different supply and demand, items have different prices in the mobile app and on browser because they were two separate marketplaces. They will be merged together. The exchange, what we called it in, in the mobile app, will just be renamed to marketplace and they'll be unified. So there won't be this idea of like, well, there's the exchange and there's the marketplace and they have two different supply and demand. Uh, they'll all be unified. They're all using the, the same underlying code, just different interfaces. Will new items be added to the marketplace with this update? Asks Vincent. No, nothing planned. Ben says, this will make selling 25 gargantual guarantee charms for 250% price harder. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, like my point to Brian's comment is, it'll be gone the, the sort of the ability to put up lots of small offers and then either get better prices or or charge a little bit more gold for the convenience factor. Um, but I, I think just the liquidity and the more ease of use of the marketplace is, is much more valuable thing to have. Uh, so outside of that here, we got, if I go back to this screenshot, you can also see the landing page. Why isn't this going? Did I freeze? Come on stream. Having technical difficulties. There we go. Uh, so we'll go back to this screenshot here. You can see this is the new landing page of the marketplace and it has tabs to show featured items, items related to your current hunting location, uh, as well as recently added items. Down below as well, you can mark up to eight items as favorites. So, so that'll allow you to easily check their price, uh, quickly make buy and sell offers at just uh, the click of the mouse. And finally, the bottom of the landing page also shows just kind of some marketplace stats of high value, frequently traded, in-demand items. Kind of interesting things, not super, super important to what you're doing, but kind of little interesting stats that are, that are scrolling by. Uh, Steve says, will marketplace history be more extensive? Yes, uh, not more extensive than it currently is, but the first iteration of the marketplace had smaller history, and I think Andrew has extended that he added some pagination. Uh, I think what uh, Steve there is referring to is the beta version of the marketplace. The history was a little shorter than it is in production, so Andrew's gone ahead and added pagination to the history section. Uh, As if asks, will you be able to finally see how much you have? Throw nothings you want to buy from things you want to buy. How much you have from things you want to buy. I don't know if I follow you. Exactly what you're saying there. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, creating offers kind of went, went over this little screenshot here. Hopefully it's pretty straightforward. You see the item you want to buy, you click it, you can find it by searching for it by name. Uh, you could also browse by category. I don't know why these screenshots have a hard time coming up. Let's try again here. There we go. I don't know if my computer's lagging a little bit here. I don't know. Uh, 
I don't think I have anything else running in the background. Maybe let me close down a thing or two here. Close down that. Close down that. Save some precious memory. Uh, see, so Azif says, if you go to try and buy a skin, you don't see if you already have it or not. Uh, you know, off the top of my head, I don't know, that's an interesting thing to note, jot down. I'm pretty sure it tells you how many you own. I'll make a note to check that out after Feedback Friday. Michelle says it says so right there. Cool. I'll double check that it does it when you're buying an item. Uh, what am I doing in the screenshot here? Now it's almost too small for me to see in the uh, the stream software here. Super pretty. I'm selling. Yeah, so when I'm selling, I see how much. I'm pretty sure when you buy, it also tells you how many. Uh, and the screenshot kind of down in the lower corner there, wrong side. And you can see an example of the progress bar. So I have two offers. One, I am selling Super Brie, and it's 100% done, so the bar is full and I can claim it. An important note there is that if it's 50% done, I can still claim the gold that I've earned thus far. I could also cancel it at any time, and I would get the gold that I've earned thus far plus back you know, half the Super Brie if it was at 50%. An important distinction too from this trend, the current marketplace is that when you create an offer, it could potentially instantly fill. So if you did something, let's say the uh, the price of those orbs there that uh, you're selling, or you're looking to buy orbs and they go for three thousand five hundred each, and you put up an offer, I want two thousand for four thousand each, it will immediately fulfill because it'd be enough orbs to fill your order, and then you'd get a little bit of gold back as well. So it kind of searched and found you better deals than you're willing to pay. I realized I had the wrong screenshot up while I was saying that. This screenshot here beside me has an example of uh, browsing for something by category. So if that was something that uh, you're interested in, just kind of browsing through different, well, what are all the cheese? What are all the crafting items? Uh, there's still a browse tab. You can go through and, and, and look through things like that. Uh, look at this screenshot here. It shows a progress bar. And the search box, I would think, would be the most popular way of interacting with the marketplace as well. Uh, Sally asks, I imagine sell orders can also fill immediately. Yes, either way. So if you make an order and there's just enough of it on the marketplace to either sell everything all in one shot or buy everything all in one shot, your order just immediately fulfills. And uh, so that means some other people were waiting for their orders to, to fulfill and uh, you'll be the person to uh, go and fulfill their order for them and have yours fill up instantly. Uh, Jester says, I see quick purchase. Is that the old marketplace system? Yeah, that's if you if that was something that you're a little bit more uh, comfortable with or something that you enjoy is just browsing to see, well, what kind of deals are out there? Uh, there are a few buttons you can see if there's just a way to quickly purchase something, kind of a, a deal that you see right there that somebody's offering for. It also gives you a sense of the, the, the volume or how many different people are selling at different price points. Uh, the listing limit has been increased from six to five. That would be a decrease. I, I think it has the same number of slots, as far as I'm aware. Let me open up uh, two versions of the game here. Mouse hunt, long tail. Uh, it might be because in the test environment, I do not have the golden shield, and the golden shield unlocks one. Um, so, whew, yeah, my computer is being slow. doesn't like me uh, encoding video at the moment, I guess. Uh, so yeah, you have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten slots. Uh, whereas right now you had eight. You had four buy and four sell. Uh, so now it looks like you have ten. And they can be for anything. So you can use them all for sell offers or all for buy offers, any combination uh, there in between. Unless Andrew set something up different here for testing. 
You have two that are locked. Uh, one you need to buy the Marketplace Stool, which I always get a chuckle that that's what that ended up being named from the King's Cart. So that costs King's Credits to permanently unlock. There's another one that you permanently unlock uh, by buying the Regal Marketplace Display Case in the cart. And two of them unlock for having the Golden Shield, and then you have six by default. Uh, will it allow for price comparison between two items like Super Brie with another item? I don't think anything directly in the interface to accomplish that uh, in a quick and easy way. I suppose you could favorite those two items and then you'd be able to see them side by side. If I go back to the landing page, there we go. You can see in the center of the section here are eight slots. I only have one of them full and seven of them are empty. That is eight, right? Two, four, six, no, it's seven. Um, and you could favorite both of those items that you're looking to keep tabs on and it would every time you open up the marketplace you'd be able to see their current price and whether they're going up or down. As it says when does it go live in uh, just over a week so not the not next Tuesday but the Tuesday following that Let me double check the date uh, Tuesday February 26 is our plan to go live unless any sort of debilitating bugs or show-stopping issues come up between now and then. It's Cecilia, it's got my back there, 26, I think. And I'll include that too in the Feedback Friday summary. And uh, I think that coincides, let me see, you gotta check the calendar. Month, what's happening on the 26th? Uh, oh, no, I was thinking of something else. Uh, so Lunar New Year comes to an end next Tuesday. That's important to keep in mind as well on February 19. And then the following week is when the Marketplace update will occur. The week after that, the birthday event will launch. So there'll be three things happening on three Tuesdays in a row. Uh, and then, yeah, I was thinking of the camp page uh, deprecation. So that we went over that during last Feedback Friday that the camp pages, uh, the, the old layout of it is no longer going to be supported and that happens on March 26th and that coincides with the end of the birthday event as well as there's a little bit of a technical milestone going live there but I don't think player, players shouldn't notice any difference for, for that anyway. Brian says stool reminds me of a trip to the doctors. Yep that's that's my mature chuckle that I give it as well the marketplace stool. Sounds like a really crappy deal to buy the Marketplace stool. I don't know. Jester says, cool. John says, I like how much it looks like a stock exchange. Uh, yeah, I think all the up and down arrows contribute to that as well. You can see trends. Uh, there's little icons. They might be a little hard to make out in the screenshot, but they will kind of let you know as well. Tagging items for different things. Uh, there's a thumbs up that means useful in this area or something recommended. So I'm in Queso River. So wild tonic is useful in this area. Uh, so when I'm scrolling through a big list, it'll just kind of highlight things that you, you know, maybe you might be interested in because they're related to where you're currently hunting. Uh, there's a little crown for high value items, a two arrows going like this for frequently traded. And so that's something good if you're looking to, you know, play the market a little bit. If you're going to be kind of in the, the meta game, if you will, of trying to earn a little extra gold, frequently traded items might be a good candidate there. And a heart for in demand. So those are items that there are lots of orders to buy, but there are not as many orders to sell. So there's, it's a great candidate if you have those things in your inventory that you could very likely convert them into gold very easily. Uh, Herrick says, I wish I could get Super V at 8.2K. These are screenshots from our test environment. So we've been testing it with a group of hunters and that's the price that's currently going for Super V in our test environment called Longtail. Brian says, uh, 5 to 26 March birthday event confirmed. Uh, yep, that is the plan at the moment, unless something something changes. The birthday event will be live on, I always like to look at a calendar so I don't misspeak, and sometimes I still manage to misspeak. Tuesday, March 5, because our actual, the game's anniversary is on March 8, if I recall correctly. So it'll be live on uh, March 5th, because we tend to like to do co-pushes on Tuesday for various reasons, and it'll wrap up That'll be one, two, three week event. It'll wrap up on March 26. And then the Sprig Egg Hunt comes not too long after that, two weeks after that, the Spring Egg Hunt on April 9. And uh, that usually goes for quite a while. There's just a lot of eggs to collect. And 
uh, that's so far all the release dates I see in my calendar for the time being. Uh, as it says, I have a question related to the premium market. It's very disappointing when you want to buy multiple item skins during a short event time. Uh, maybe you could elaborate a little bit on that. I'm not sure, like from the actual marketplace itself. This update may help with that, where you could put up a large offer to buy lots of things, and it'll slowly fill over time. Uh, so it's not as, or it doesn't need as much micromanaging of constantly having to open the marketplace, claim the one skin, and then immediately put up another offer to buy another skin. Uh, and you can't enjoy all of the golden shield. Uh, yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, that's kind of a bit of just how the golden shield works in that it uh, doesn't extend and uh, that uh, it's, it, it'll extend it only if it's going to make it longer. And so that's a result of if you spend a dollar, you get a month, and if you spend fifty dollars, you get four months. So because that scale isn't uh, linear, then it, it can't just keep extending. Otherwise, there's no sense to it, right? I mean, somebody who spends fifty dollars getting four months, or somebody spending five dollars in five dollar or individual transactions would have five months. Uh, and so the only really option we'd have there would be to shorten the golden shield time for lower purchases, and I don't think that's something we want to do. Uh, so I realize it's a little bit awkward the way it works, but it's kind of this part of the game. That's how it. Uh, that's how it works. So, uh, Brian, with a good reminder, remember to blow out your candles before the birthday event starts. Uh, it's a good reminder. If you have the birthday cake from the tenth birthday, then uh, once a year you get to blow out the candles, and you get one super brief for every year you've played the game. Uh, maybe you have skins sealed and the shield only start when you open it. That's yeah, an interesting suggestion as well. Kind of uh, th think that over a bit. I mean, the kits for sure let you pack away a shield, but at the cost of not being able to put those resources to use. Uh, and so, you know, again, it's not a, it's not ideal. It's not sort of the perfect way. I think hindsight, not how we would have put it in, but uh, we certainly don't want to make the shield time shorter for smaller purchases. So uh, with that in mind, we just kind of left everything as is. And I don't, I, we haven't quite found the perfect solution to that. Uh, Herrick says, any updates on friend slots greater than 500? We are still working on adding the ability to send supplies to people who are not your friends and a little bit of trading, if you will. So the marketplace took a little priority over that. Uh, so and not too much to update yet. Yeah, Brian met the magical birthday cake. That should be the same item I'm thinking of as well. Uh, yeah, and I think you, you can blow it out on your actual birthday. So I don't think... It has to be on the mouse hunt birthday, although it's a good reminder to check to make sure the candles aren't lit. Uh, but if you started playing on October 1st, then every year on October 1st, your candles would turn back on and you can blow them out and uh, you get one more Super Brie every time you blow them out. It is a limited edition item though. It was to celebrate mouse hunt's 10th birthday. Uh, so going forward, I guess fewer and fewer hunters will have that cake. Or at least fewer and fewer active hunters. The exact number would stay the same. Isn't it 10 Super Brie per year? Uh, you know what I don't recall now? Let me see. I thought it was one. Could be 10. Uh, yes, Michelle is correct. I stand corrected. You can blow up the candles and receive 10 Super Brie for each year you've been hunting. Uh, so if you've been playing for all 11 years, you'll get 111 or 110 Super Brie. If my math failed me for a second. Off by one error. I'm a programmer. I'm allowed to be off by one. You get 110 Super Brie this year for blowing out the candles if you're uh, playing since day one. The Loot Lexicon doesn't have an Ellie tick on the Magical Cake, Dave. I think we will probably be adding that in the not-too-distant future. Sally confirms, yes, it is 10. Will there be any Lunar New Year event tournaments? Uh, you know what? I think we avoided doing uh, specific tournaments because it doesn't quite gel well with the gameplay of Lunar New Year, where you don't really sit there and, and capture the event mice the whole time, and it's more about going out and doubling and tripling your loot in other spots. So with that in mind, tournaments didn't gel too well. 
Uh, but Valentine's, there were some tournaments running, the very popular solo and duo tournaments. I believe Michelle scheduled a few of those. Purple says, I can't see anything. Uh, I assume other people can see me. Try refreshing the page. I will say my computer seems to be struggling a little bit today. I might reboot it after this. I don't know what's going on. My CPU usage is low, uh, but I'm dropping frames here and there. And just in general, when I alt tab out to a browser window, things are extremely laggy. I don't know what's going on. Uh, Mass says, might have missed it, but is the birthday event going to be cupcakes? We might go into it a little bit more on a future Feedback Friday. It's going to be a new event uh, based on feedback. Hopefully, we're trying to find something that we can repeat every year. Uh, it'll be a way to kind of earn a few cool items, a uh, way to get a, a little trickle of free Super Brie as well uh, during the event. Uh, but we'll probably go into it a little bit more on a future Feedback Friday. Uh, Herrick asks, next year Lunar New Year still Lantern event? I think so. I mean, I can't say with certainty, but uh, it certainly is well received. Uh, personally, I like the theme of it. I like that it's something you can look forward to all year. You can stockpile it's a little bit of extra cheese or charms or supplies and try to use them up and try to get some extra bang for your buck uh, for those two weeks in terms of using up your supplies. Dennis says, we see you just fine. So purple, I think, or, uh, earlier saying, uh, just try refreshing it. But uh, other than that, I don't know. I'll look into it a little bit after the stream. Uh, like I said, it does seem like the stream quality is kind of suffering a little bit from what I can tell on my end. And my computer is being uh, not too nice either, so I don't quite know what's going on. I don't think those screenshots are in extremely high resolution or anything. I don't think it'd be using up too much memory. Let me see here. Yeah, I'm not using swap. I don't know. CPU seems okay. Might just be a fact I need to restart, maybe. I think I rebooted not too long ago. When in doubt, turn it on and off again. Off and on again. Turn it on and off again. Yeah, that'll fix everything. Uh, what will you do after you finish all the animals from the Lunar Year event? There are only 12. Well, we're a ways off from that, so... Uh, we'll see, but that'll be interesting for sure. Brian says, Year of the Rat quad candles. Yeah, it'll be a very special Lunar New Year next year. It'll be Year of the Rat that's very close to mouse. Uh, so the costumed rat mouse will be uh, not too different, I would think, from uh, what's uh, what's behind the mask. Slightly more, uh, or slightly larger, a little more gruesome. Rats tend to be a little bit, uh, a little bit larger, bigger teeth, a little more powerful than, uh, than your standard mouse. I say standard mouse because in mouse out there's some very unstandard mice that I would not want to encounter in real life. Uh, Tiger and Rabbit didn't get their jade base yet. We didn't do the, uh, the same sort of event. Uh, I think what was it like Heart of the Tiger, I think was You're the Tiger. That was the theme of the event. Uh, but there were no jade bases yet. So we'd have to make it maybe to 14 years of doing the same sort of jade theme. Uh, nervous. Nervous, I don't know how to say your name. Right, I'm gonna call you Nervous, says, can we use candles for loot when event is over? No, you need the the power of the pig lantern to be able to light those candles and the lantern will be gone at the end of the event. So by all means, if you're sitting on some candles, start using them ASAP. When the event is uh, done, you can save your candles for next year, assuming we do the same event, uh, but you will not be able to use your candles after the event ends. Will the global corkboard from beta be implemented as well? Uh, that, yeah, you may have seen that on long tails, just something to help testers. By no means would it scale very well to have uh, 30 to 90,000 people using a, all in the same chat at the same time. Uh, there'd be some technical issues with having that scale and just from usability as well. It's hard to have a conversation with uh, 15,000 people. So I don't think that'd be something we would do. Heard the tiger was lit, says Brian. Costumed rat rat will be the costumed rat mouse. I mean, mice and rat, they're different. Uh, why can't we copy and paste from the app, says Ben. Yeah, that's an interesting question, actually. It's a bit of a technical limitation of the technology that the 
app is built in. So when you're using the mobile app, it's actually a website in, in Kate or kind of in framed in a uh, native app. So it's it's all kind of web technology. And unfortunately, the way a browser works on a mobile device is you'd if you could copy and paste, then when you're navigating, a lot of times you'd find you'd accidentally be highlighting stuff a lot. And uh, so that, that's a little bit of an annoyance. Uh, but when you remove that, because you can no longer highlight stuff, that uh, makes you no longer able to copy and paste as well. And I, I can kind of, without us adding, you know, say if there's a corkboard message you wanted to copy, I'm pretty sure we could add a button so you could tap it and it would copy it to your clipboard. Uh, but when you press and hold, you won't be able to click and drag to highlight something to copy it. Lim says, random question, but will we see parental power type in the floating islands? Uh, I would say probably not, but if we did, it might be a little Easter egg or a joke, or we might take that opportunity to remove that power type from the game. Purple says, works on phone, can see you now. So that's interesting. That wasn't working on uh, your desktop machine there. Not sure what's going on. Like I said, I think I'm going to reboot after Feedback Friday. My machine does seem to be running a little bit slow, so uh, maybe there's, there's something weird going on. Uh, any chance of an extension to the Lunar New Year event? I don't think so. I mean, it's something that I think that's left uh, best left short and sweet. It is a quite powerful event that it, that adds to the fun of it, though, being able to look forward to it all year and, like I said, stockpile a few supplies. Uh, but you know, in terms of just the sheer quantity of loot going into the game and stuff, it's I think it's better to be short and sweet than to go on for too long. What's the rank after Sage? Top one has 71% Sage. Getting there. We'll leave it a surprise. It might be hidden away somewhere in the game. Um, but I think I mentioned on previous Feedback Friday, at the moment anyway, that next title will act as a cap. So if somebody does reach the next title, their progress bar goes away. You still keep earning points, but uh, your title progression uh, will, will halt until we add new titles. Uh, we still have some time to think over if we want to add a title above what's next. Uh, Jason says, when will Valentine Mice go from the population? I got to get using my candles. You know, I feel the same. I'm kind of like, you know, I want to get some of these Valentine mice, but also I, I got the candles are adding up and I want to put them to good use. Uh, they, they <coughs> excuse me. Uh, they'll be going away somewhat shortly. I would say probably in about two and a half hours or so. I, the plan was we're going to come back from lunch and we'll shut down the Valentine's portion. Love the Orca skin. Thank you. Glad you uh, liked it. Yeah, it's pretty cute. I think Lauren painted that. I'm usually pretty good at telling which artist uh, drew which asset, but recently I've been off my game, or they've been their art styles been gelling even bit even closer together. Uh, as there's something else I thought like uh, I thought Maxine painted, and Lauren painted it, so then their styles are merging. Uh, I'd hope for the ability to read full login app, but I guess it would be hard to read. Uh, yeah, I mean keep that feedback coming. That's been a suggestion that we've had a few times as well, just the ability to see more journals in the mobile app. Um, just kind of something we haven't prioritized, but the more often we hear it suggested, that kind of helps us uh, prioritize it or make it a, a more important decision, I guess. Uh, what about the thousandth mouse? Are we getting, we're getting closer. We are getting there. Yeah, we'll see if uh, we kind of come up with anything. <laughs> Higher attraction rate for the costume pig mouse. I don't think it's all that low. I double checked with Franco, who put together Lunar New Year this year, um, and it, it, it's decent. And actually, it's interesting. Actually, your first run through, there is a little bit of rubber banding, and the longer you go without attracting the next costume mouse, it starts to become a little bit more, uh, or this attraction rate goes up a little bit, just to kind of help smooth out RNG a little bit and. Uh, like I said, probably like rubber banding, I think is the term there. Uh, but when, once you complete that, that, that gets lifted and they all have their standard encounter rates. We have a chance to view a hunting report as and when through the settings. There is still that uh, hunting log that'll come up in your journal every now and then. We have had sitting in the idea bank for a while a sort of a ticker or a tracker that you can choose when you want to reset it. So something, almost like a stopwatch, you could reset it and then it'll start counting all the gold and points you earn and maybe keep track of all the loot you've earned and you could view that anytime you want and then you could maybe share it reset it start it over uh, something would be handy when you start a really big run of something you could go okay cool I want to see how many points and gold I get and how many hunts 
Uh, but it's a bit of a bigger undertaking, so it's a whole new feature, and so it kind of remained in the idea bank as we prioritize other things. What is the name of the rank after Sage? We'll leave it as a surprise when somebody gets there, unless somebody finds it tucked away, hidden somewhere in the game. Uh, so the king don't want any successor and stop ranking up people. Uh, yeah, we'll see. It was more of a technical uh, technical implementation to have that level cap there so that if somebody does get there and we don't have a update in place yet to add new titles, that nothing would break. Uh, so they wouldn't start going into negative title progression. Or I think the game would just, well, previously the game would not load properly for them because it always assumes there's a title after your current title. Uh, so we had to kind of put in a cap. There had to be some sort of logical, what happens if there isn't a title past your current title? Uh, but that's, you know, that's just not to say we wouldn't add more titles based on uh, feedback. Please freeze requirement of Sentry Egg this year. Not nice to have it be more and more difficult for new players to a point that is a test of perseverance more than strategy. Uh, that's a fair point. That's maybe something we can keep in mind to put a cap on how many crowns you need for the crown egg. It will get harder and harder every year. Uh, but a lot about the spring egg hunt is about above and beyond collectibles. So, yeah, I, I get, though, that, hey, somebody playing five years ago was a little easier to get. But five years ago as well, there weren't as good traps. Uh, and it was a little bit harder to, to progress. So I, I don't know, though. It might kind of self-balance itself as time goes on. Get Jacob to draw M400 for Rift Rodentia and not release it for four years like he did for the original M400. And we held on to that one for a while. Who knows, maybe that thousandth mouth will have a similar fate. Uh, Sentry Egg is a tie to the MHCC, hence the 30% requirement. Yeah, it was a little homage to the Mouse Hunt Sentry Club. Uh, Destin says he had a bug with a tournament. I do believe that bug report is sitting on somebody's plate right now, so we're looking into that. Rift Rodentia is weird. That will be a little bit of a weird one when we uh, get to the Rift Rodentia, but uh, no immediate plans to work on that. Any brief updates on the spring account this year? How many new eggs areas, where they come from? No, although we'd be open to suggestion. By all means, kind of keep uh, suggestions for new eggs you'd like to see. As sure as it comes a little closer, that can be a whole topic of Feedback Friday to collect some suggestions. Where do I sign up to overthrow the monarch and turn it into a republic? Nania's first republic? Uh, I don't think there's sign-up sheets. You'd have to start your own movement. Uh, John asks, new rift area this year. Uh, that is kind of one of the ideas we're kicking around. So if you didn't join us last week, I think last week we went over it. Uh, the idea, we're finally we're exploring ideas for a first Archduke area. It's a little large scale though, so we, we want to kind of work on it or chip away at it piecemeal and probably slot it in for 2020. Uh, but then to kind of fill the gap, because we still want to release some areas this year, that was one of the ideas we were kicking around was having an Archduke level rift. And probably Valor Rift would be something that would be relatively smaller, uh, could still have that rank requirement as well as we're kicking around the idea of having an intro or a lead-up area into the next Archduke area, uh, which is kind of floating islands theme, that big one for 2020. Uh, you can think of it in terms of the fungal cavern, sort of a staging area, an area that you're going to go to and unlock the, the larger storyline. So the fungal cavern unlocks the labyrinth in Zokor, and that's a, that's a lot kind of more involved and beefy. And uh, so it's something kind of similar in, in terms of scale there. RIP the freshly painted egg. You know, I'll make a note of that as well. I think there's a there, there's another note already kicking around, but I'll double check. Uh, it should be okay though. Uh, market, marketplace egg for that matter. Got to make sure that still exists. Uh, there still will be that toggle though in the settings to use. Uh, I don't think it's going to be called new and old layout anymore, but the for players who are grandfathered on the old style navigation buttons that are a little more colorful looking, you'll still be able to keep those navigations. So, in the, or more specifically in terms of layout, in the old layout, the camp button is a big green button that is currently in the new layout where the hunter time, hunt timer is. You'll still be able to use that old layout. So if you like the camp being in this, that same spot as a big green button, you'll still be able to do that. 
So for in terms of the egg hunt, I, the freshly coated egg could probably still remain, uh, but you'd need to try out the new navigation layout in order to collect that egg once. Uh, any thoughts about extending a small perk for hunters at higher ranks? Yeah, that is something that's crossed our mind, or even for higher level areas as we get into them, to add little twists here and there so that you can still hunt with lower ranked friends, but maybe there's little hidden chambers and stuff to explore based on your title. Something maybe similar, we haven't done it in a long time, but uh, Zugswing's Tower, you can charge your amplifier a little bit higher if you are above uh, the rank required for the seasonal garden. Things like that have crossed your mind. Uh, can you consider decreasing the price of the top rift trap? It's mostly controlled by supply and demand of the runes, I would think. Uh, ben, I left a Valor Rift idea suggestion in the forum. I think I saw that one. I think it was yours about rebuilding the gauntlet from the ground up. Relic Hunter in Queso River. I think the Relic Hunter shows up in Queso River from time to time, if I recall. Off the top of my head, I don't know, though. Uh, George says it was an unusually short Valentine event. Last year we had the same duration, kind of the day before the day after Valentine's. Uh, but we made it a little bit more valuable. Uh, it, oh, actually this is the same as last year. You could get the Neon Gala cheese, which uh, otherwise it's the only way to kind of get a trickle of it outside of raising your lantern up. Ryan says, really in Queso River? Let me see, I'll, I'll double check. I mean, we have to wrap things up soon. I got uh, a few things on my plate today. I didn't make quite as much progress on the Queso Geyser area as I would have liked to this week. So I'm going to get back to that. Try to make some headway. Uh, let me see here. It's been a while since I looked at the Relic Hunter. There we go. All right. Uh, let me see. We got Nania, Valor, Burroughs, Whisker Woods, Froma, Bristle Woods, Tribal Isles, Varmint Valley, Queso Canyon. Yes, Queso River. It can show up. And spoiler alert, but the tips are sipping delicious liquid from a river, protecting her ears from the sound of loud pumps, or enjoying a quick dip in a cheesy bath. I think those are all pretty obvious hints. Uh, but when you open up the interface and you see one of those three hints about where the relic hunter is currently, then that means it's in the queso river. So you pump some queso, collect some uh, scroll cases. Uh, Salim says, really like the UI eggs, felt like more of an egg hunt. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a neat theme rather than collecting the eggs from the mice. You, you hunt around the interface. It's, it's kind of fun. In view of new Archduke Viceroy areas, would there be any new cap limits on Slayer Lightning Scrolls? Um, yeah, I mean, that, that sounds like a fun idea if we can find a spot to fit that in. Even harder and harder maps as you get into more high-ranking areas. Uh, it's nice because it's a type of thing you can choose to embark upon that challenge. I think that's part of the appeal of Slayer Maps is it's not a challenge that's thrust upon you, but when you're in the mood to, t to go the extra mile, you can do something that's extra challenging. Ben says, birthday event spoilers. Not too much to share yet. We'll probably share some screenshots and coming feedback Fridays. And uh, who knows, maybe Jacob will paint something birthday related. Um, but we're, it's a new event, we're kind of exploring something that hopefully, if it go, if, uh, has positive feedback, something we can repeat throughout the years to free up more time to work on new content. Um, but you'll get a, a trickle of Super Breeder in the event, and there'll be an opportunity as well, some limited edition traps to earn from the birthday, as well as uh, some stretch goals of earning some powerful charms. Mentioning the Relic Hunter, maybe have him in two areas at a time. I think the personification of the Relic Hunter is female, but um, yeah, it's an interesting suggestion. As, it, as the Relic Hunter shows up in more and more areas, it becomes harder to target, especially if you're a little lower level hunter and you don't have access to some of the areas the Relic Hunter is currently hanging out in. Julia was answering Ryan's question. Okay, I think I missed that. I've been in... QR for ages, and yes, the Relic Hunter has been there. It was there a couple hours ago. <laughs> Destin asks, how's the, scro the school of sharks fitted with a toothlet and chrome finish coming? That is a fun idea. I don't know if we'll, we'll do that, but I do like the idea. It sounds fun. Ray says, where are you reading those clues? Well, in-game, if you go to start a map, so if you click start new treasure map, whoa. I better wrap things up because my computer is getting sweaty. I wonder, because normally my fan comes on. My fan hasn't turned on. I wonder if my CPU is just ready to, to cook lunch on it. 
Uh, so if you open up the treasure map interface and you go to the bottom, it says Seeking the Relic Hunter. Start your hunt for treasure. There's a hint right below that. It currently is the Relic Hunter has been spotted in a treacherous environment where only the toughest of mice survive. Uh, so those are the hints of where the Relic Hunter is currently located. Uh, and then just to double check if it was in the river, I just opened up the part of the game code that uh, controls where the Relic Hunter goes and where all those hints are. Brian says there's currently only elite toxic spill maps since that's the only Archduke mouse in the game now. Uh, Yepper, oh, okay, I see what you mean about the maps. Will there be harder tiers beyond arduous? Um, and yeah, we'd be waiting for a few more Archduke areas. Uh, then when you open up a regular Relic Hunter scroll case, there'd be a chance you could find an elite Relic Hunter uh, treasure map, and that would include some Archduke mice. Julia says, just in time to heat up lunch, and I'm getting nervous. And it has been 47 minutes, so we better wrap things up. I am now in fear of my laptop overheating, because it is concerning that it's running slow and the CPU fan is not turned on. And it usually does after about 20 minutes of encoding video. The laptop says no more fans coming on. <clears throat> CPU ready to boil spilled coffee. Let's hope not. Ryan says, now your image is very smooth. Well, glad to hear it. Hints for the Relic Hunter sound awesome. They're already in the game, Maddie. You can open up the um, treasure map interface and toward the bottom where it says Seeking the Relic Hunter, you can read a hint about where it's currently located. Now, there's certainly some community tools out there as well, or you can check the wiki, and uh, the, the hints will be solved for you, or some community tools, I'll just tell you where it is. But uh, if you're looking for a more independent route, you can try to decipher those hints. Didn't hear the fan today all new. I hope not. As many are aware, I did recently after a pretty good stretch. I think I had the same laptop for a good six years. It met its unfortunate device uh, from a very large 20 ounce coffee. Well, I'll take one more question. And Purple says, where were you hunting during Lunar New Year, Dave? I am currently in the river to collect some more red candles while the Valentine's mice are around. And then it's back to the Twisted Garden for me where I am trying to make my way to 500 um, Twisted Carmine catches. And I think at the moment I have more living chests than I do uh, Twisted Carmine catches, which is kind of cool that the, the candles have gotten me there. How did TC farming go? It, it's been going well. Where am I at in my journey? Check the living garden mice. 17. So Twisted Carmine, I'm currently at 400, and uh, I wonder if I have enough steam to make it to 1,000. I think I will be the seventh hunter to gold crown Twisted Carmine, should I meet that goal. There's only been six before me who have done it. Two people have over 1,000 catches, so I'd have a while to go before I could take that title. I'm getting there. Then you need your 500 Queen Quesada catch. My fan just turned on. Oh. That's nice. Uh, I don't know if it's quite, if I'm quite intense enough to go for 500 Queen Quesada, maybe one day. Uh, question is, how many chests do you have? I don't know, how many am I at right now? I haven't checked. Uh, probably around 410 or something like that. I think I just got to the point where I have more chests than most cat catches. Living chest. I have 413 living chests and 400 captures of Twisted Carmine. Oh, now it's just tempting. You made me look at that, and I want to click the open all button. I gotta close my. I gotta close my inventory. Gotta close it. All right. On that note, hunters, we will wrap things up. Uh, actually, one more little item. Actually, I meant to bring this up much much sooner. I apologize. Is my computer will make it this long? Uh, so we popped on Discord and we got some more marketplace feedback from quite a, from a larger group of hunters, and so I want to put that up as well. Is how to get to Longtail. Let me see here. Let me get rid of that. I'll just edit this feedback Friday to say something else. If I can figure out how to do that, there we go. Oh, it's a little big. Yeah, let's ditch the HTTP and the trailing slash. Nobody needs that. 
All right, Feedback Friday exclusive. You can go to, that is very hard to read. <laughs> they move it down maybe. Need more contrast. You can go to longtail.mousehuntgame.com and you will see a test version of the game where you can try out the new marketplace. There are a few signups left. I think the maximum number of people that can be on Longtail is 300, and I think we're at 78. So another 222 people could join. And let me triple check here. It's a little bit different to get into. You wouldn't just sign up for an account uh, as you'd expect. Ooh, what am I doing? Hold on. I got two new windows open. Two new windows open. Close that. So you can go to longtail.mousehuntgame.com and then if you make an account, you have to use a very specific password in order for the registration to work. And that password is... Oh, that's... Come on. What is going on here? Everything must go. And in programming terms, everything must go. Camel case, if you've ever heard that term before in the programming world. Oh, don't freeze, don't freeze, computer. You got this, you got this. You can handle two texts on the screen at the same time, I promise. Drop shadow, let's put a little drop shadow on that. There we go, that makes it easier to read. So you can visit longtail.mousehuntgame.com. That is a test version of the game. Heads up, obviously, uh, access to that could be shut down at any moment, and it often gets reset as well, so you lose progress, but it is a test version of the game. You can sign up. You can use any account name you want, but your password must be everything must go. I would recommend changing it after you log in. That will work just fine. Uh, but if you use the everything must go, it's like an access code. That has to be your password when you sign up. That will let you make an account. And then you can take the new marketplace for a test spin. And then when I post Feedback Friday summary, I'll post one on the Mouse Hunt forums as well as my Facebook page. Uh, you can chime in with some feedback there as well. And Ben says, I've used almost all my 300 Diamond Cheese Day. Yes, you will start at a high level with some gold and some various other items, uh, especially some tradable items so that you can actually put the marketplace to use. So you'll find yourself dropped into the game in a bit of a weird spot, uh, but that's just to make it so you can actually use the marketplace. Uh, Chong says there are no notifications for Feedback Friday in-game. Yeah, it's been broken for a while. Can't quite figure out what's wrong with it. Uh, but hopefully we'll get the banners working again some, sometime soon. If you subscribe to us on YouTube, you will get an email. If you uh, use that setting as well, you'll get an email. Or if you have the app, I'm pretty sure it will send you a push notification as well when we go live. But on that same time, every week we... Uh, been 54 minutes, Whew. so whatever time it is where you are right now, subtract 54 minutes, and every Friday that's when we go live outside of holidays or if the office is closed, something like that. H says, is it possible to implement individual mouse scoreboard? That is in the idea bank. I want that idea desperately, uh, but uh, there's some technical limitations there, there's some refactoring that we'd have to do to how mouse stats are recorded, and so that, that's held us back, but I am very excited about that idea as well. Chong says, I'm late, so we shouldn't keep the Lunar New Year cheese. If we repeat the event next year, it will probably be the same cheese and same candles, so you can keep them for next year if you have extras. Uh, but keep in mind the candles, you won't be able to use them when the event ends because the lantern will no longer be around. So uh, definitely put as many to use as you can. Save some for next year. We should probably repeat the event, but again, it's a little early to say uh, for sure and put that yeah, set that in stone. What about a scoreboard for denture-based toothlet decay streak? That is kind of a, a fun like, DHU scoreboard. You have to get a GoFundMe going for the scoreboard update. Uh, it would be beyond that. It's hard to kind of ramp up mouse hunt development really quickly, being a 11-year-old game. And a lot of it that we created fresh out of college is fresh college grads. There's some, uh, there's some legacy code is the, is the term that gets used. So it takes a while to get somebody up to speed on how to work on mouse hunt. Uh, we've, you know, every day we try to make the code a little bit better than uh, it was the day before, but uh, it's hard if somebody just said, you know, here you go, here's uh, 20 grand to make a scoreboard system or something. It's very hard to just contract that out or hire somebody and get them to working on it on day one. Uh, it takes a few months to kind of sink your teeth into mouse hunt uh, before you can really start doing some independent work on it. Daylight savings returning soon. Feedback Friday will start at a different time. 
It's the glorious uh, daylight savings time. The bane of programmers everywhere, time zones and times changing. For whatever reason, programming with time logic is uh, always error prone. The beta website is just tanking on me right now. Uh oh, I fear that might happen. I said I would leave 15 minutes ago and here I am. Uh, let me see what it's doing. Ah, it's, it's, it's okay. It's not the beefiest server that we have running that. Uh, that's why it's limited to 300 accounts. I may have to lower that a little bit. We'll see. Uh, so if it does start choking a little bit, I may have to drop the amount of users that are allowed on it down from 300, maybe down to 100, 125, something like that. I got in. The registration process, unfortunately, is a bit of a heavy call. It's a little bit of work the server has to do. It loads up a lot of items in the game, uh, especially in the test environment. It's giving you a lot of items in your inventory. So that's kind of a lot of items I have to load out of memory, go into your inventory, uh, setting up an account as well. There's a lot of rows get written in the database. Uh, so by all means, everyone all doing it at the same time is a, is a little bit of a stretch, especially that server is not exactly the most powerful piece of computing equipment that's running the test server. It's probably comparable. Well, it's better than my laptop, I'd say, but uh, it's running both all the web server traffic and it's also running the database. Uh, so it's, it's got a lot of work to do. So uh, certainly not too many people can be on it at the same time. Julia, thank you for keeping us in the loop. Uh, my pleasure. Having player feedback is paramount to making sure we build something that players are gonna enjoy. So uh, I thank players for providing feedback. Can't log into Longtail by using Facebook. Correct, you are gonna have to go to that website and sign up with the password. So like I said, it's a little bit weird. It's not the most streamlined process, but it's not something we do too, too much. We usually test with a, a smaller set of, uh, smaller group of testers. But you can make your account anything you want, but you have to use that password. It's kind of like an access code. So as we approach the hour mark, which puts us on pace for one of the longer feedback Fridays we've ever done, I'll wrap things up. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, Hunters. Uh, like I said, I will post a summary of Feedback Friday both in the tavern section of the Mouse on Forums and on my Facebook page so you can give some initial impressions of the Marketplace update, some final feedback and suggestions for us to incorporate if, uh, some last minute tweaks next week. And uh, then look forward to the Marketplace update. Hopefully if all goes well, that will be not next Tuesday, but the following Tuesday that will go live. Thanks for joining me. Happy hunting. And uh, I think Jacob will see you next week for a live painting video.